Hello, my name is Barry Kidd, and today, Barry the Platypus and I are going to talk about how I got this shot of the tree in the fog at night with the light rays coming out of it using off-camera flash, all right? Now, before we get started, I'm going to go through all the gear that I use to get this particular shot. <clears throat> but before we do, it's important, it's incredibly important that you realize the gear, dude, the gear is not important. Alright? All you need is a camera, a flash, and a way to trigger that flash. And as you see, I've got a big flash here. Alright? You can use a speed light, but we'll get into that later. But that said here, let's let's get into the into the gear. Alright. Now, the camera that I use is this one right here. It's the Nikon D850. I'm going, oh by the way, I will link all this stuff in the comment section below. Alright. The lens that I use is the AF Nikkor 50mm 1.4. D as in Delta. It's the old series 50 millimeter, not the new G series. Y'all oh, excuse me, my eyes hurt. Anyway, the flash that I used was this right here, was the Profoto B1X 500 watt second monolight. To fire the flash, I used this right here. This is the Profoto Air Remote TTL for Nikon. That's okay. And let's see. I also use this little guy here. This is the Profoto OCF Zoom Reflector. What this did, this puppy allowed me to concentrate the light so that it didn't spread out so much. And uh, it also gives me one stop or one full stop more power than the bare head alone. So essentially, it will effectively give you. Um, give me say it'll transfer transform this 500 watt second strobe into a 1000 watt second strobe obviously it doesn't add power to it it just concentrates the light so that the amount of light hitting your lens from the same distance is one full stop more okay we also have a tripod now you get away without using a tripod for this shot but I highly recommend it because it's going to keep your camera steady when you're walking back and forward to illuminate the tree or whatever object you're shining your light through all right I did not use this tripod I used the Manfrotto 290 tripod but the camera I'm recording this video on is mounted to that tripod and I did not have this tripod at the time I shot that a couple years ago. This is a much better tripod, and I would have used it if I'd have had it. And this is the Manfrotto 190 carbon fiber tripod with the Manfrotto magnesium ball head. Dude, I do not know the nomenclature of this ball head. It's like this long. Numbers and letters and stuff that really I don't care that much about. The ball head is cool. I like the ball head. I don't know the name of it, but like everything else, I will link it below in the comments below if you'd like to go check all that, that out. And that's the gear that I use. But like I said, I will reiterate, gear is not important. Camera, flash, even a speed light, and a way to trigger that flash remotely, and you are in business. Now, we're gonna get into color temperature of this photo, right? This is probably gonna be the longest, most boring part of this video for some people, but I'm gonna get into it anyway, all right? Now, if you look at this shot, you'll see that it is blue. I knew that I wanted that photo to have a cool, cool look or be a cooler temperature before I even left the house so I knew my location I knew what I was gonna do 
and I knew I wanted a blue or cool temperature photo. So I set my white balance manually all the way down to 2,500 Kelvin, which is as low as this particular camera will go. All right. Now, essentially what I did was I lied to the camera and told it that I was in a warm light environment as opposed to a cool light environment, which this flash fires. I set the camera to 2,500. The flash fires at a, at a white balance of 5,500 Kelvin. All right. Now, when what your camera does when it's on auto white balance is it reads all the color and the information, particularly the grays, and it says, hey, <laughs> this is what I need to do to neutralize this photo to make it look neutral, like it was in white light, all right? Since I told the camera that I was in a warm light environment, and this light was already cooler than that, it added it added 3,000 Kelvin to this 5,500 Kelvin, right, to make the end result essentially it shot about 8,000 Kelvin, all right? And that's how we got the blue photo. Because to neutralize it, it had to add blues to make it, well, normal, <laughs> or like it was shot in white light. And that's how the photo was blue. In post-production, I did do a wee bit of saturation adjustment. I didn't get out of control or out of, uh, just go batshit crazy with it. But I did add blue to it, all right? Okay, now, with that out of the way, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about light rays, okay? <sighs> or photons. We, as humans, cannot see light or photons as they pass through the air in front of us, all right? You can't see it. You cannot see photons passing through the air any more than you can see wind blowing. But just like you can feel the wind blow on your skin, or you can see it rustling in the leaves of the trees around you, or blowing dirt around, or whatever the wind is doing, that gives you an indication that the wind or the breeze is actually there. The same goes with, with light cannot see it passing in front of your eyes you can't see we cannot see check this out the electromagnetic spectrum or visible light but we can see it as it we can see what it reflects off of it will strike an object it will reflect off of it and go back into our eye to allow us to see whatever object it reflected off of okay <sighs> now Though you can't see light rays passing through the air, you can see it, like I said, when it reflects off of stuff. And when it's foggy or mist is in the air or smoke, that light reflects or... <laughs> when the light passes through fog, it illuminates off of and it reflects off of the water molecules in the air and that's what you see is a light reflecting off of the water molecules in the fog okay now when we shot the light through the tree and we're on the opposite side of it the leaves and the branches blocked that light source so that on the opposite side of it it was shadow but where it didn't block, where the trees and the branches did not block the light source, it allowed the light to pass through. And that created the rays of light that we see. All right? So that's the short rub of how you're able to see the light rays. Okay? But with all that said, I'm going to go back here real quick and uh, explain to you how I had this set up. Now, before we get started with that, Dude, it was pitch black out there. I'm not Hollywood, and I do not have the capability or the know-how to film in absolute black or even near black, okay? 
So we're going to try our best to explain how we did it here, well, when it's like. So with that said, here we go. Let's talk about that real quick. Now, here we're going to enter the wonderful land of make-believe, all right? I need you to pretend that this arm of mine is that tree, okay? Now, I'm gonna flip this around because I'm right-handed and it'll just be easier for me. There we go, that's the way it works, all right? Now we're gonna pretend that my arm is the tree, okay? Now I set this light up about eh, 75 or 80 feet away from the tree, okay? For you metric types, that's going to be right about 23 or 24 meters, give or take. Don't hold me to that. I'm just guessing, but I'm assuming it's pretty close, all right? I also had the light low to the ground. I've got it up here so that you can see it for the video, but in reality, it's down low, a little bit lower than waist level, perhaps, okay? Now, <laughs> yeah, that's smart. Okay, now, so, the light is behind the tree. My camera is over here. Hello, this is my camera, okay? And it's about 150 feet away from the tree, or perhaps 50 meters, all right? Now, you cannot see the light from the camera's position because the tree is blocking it, okay? You can't see it. So what I did, when it's dark, I set up my tripod and I set the tripod low to the ground as well. And I couldn't see the tree to focus it. So I grab a flashlight and I walk over to the tree and I shine a light on the trunk of that tree. I go back to my tripod, I focus on the tree trunk where the light is shining on it and then I lock my Excuse me. I then I lock my focus down to manual so that it doesn't move. Go back, get my flashlight, and turn it off. Okay. Then I walk over to the light. I wanted to concentrate the light, like I said, and I wanted it to hit all the way up to the top of the tree. So I angled the the light up. I did not have it shooting straight up. I angled it up. Okay. And that's when I reach for this puppy right here, okay? The OCF zoom reflector. I placed it on the light, okay? Now, when you look at this photo, here it is again, down here in the lower part of the trunk, you can see a hot spot, all right? That's where the, the top of this reflector, the light reflected off of the top of the reflector and it shot it straight forward and it created that hot spot that you see surrounding in the trunk. I could not eliminate that. Try as I might, okay? But, or to get as much light as I, I wanted. But with the light facing up, and this light concentrated, it also shot it all the way high up into the branches of the tree and beyond, okay? So here we are, light set up down here. Okay, I walk back to my camera position and I pulled the trigger and I snapped off two or three frames. That's it. It looked the way I wanted. All three were essentially the same. And that was done. Game over. Easy peasy. <laughs> okay. That's how simple the shot was. All right. How simple it was to get that shot at any rate. <coughs> now, one more thing before I go. Dude, I love light. Cameras, they really don't excite me that much. I don't really get into cameras. Now, while there are obvious advantages to higher-end cameras, and particularly really fancy cameras, unlike this one, all right? Essentially, every camera, no matter how expensive or inexpensive, is little more than a box with a hole in it. And that's the way I view my camera. It's a box with a hole in it, and I don't get excited about the camera. I do, however, get excited about light. I love light. 
it is also my curse. I think about light day and night and night and day. I mean, it's just almost, almost constantly churning in, my, in the background of my mind. Light, how do you manipulate the light? How do you place the light? The shadow detail, a lot of people forget about shadow detail. The shadow detail is just as important as the light itself, all right? And then there's the color of the light. All of these things have to be taken into consideration. Now, while I love light, and I love the, the whole concept of lighting and photography, I don't make a lot of videos. Those of you that follow my channel probably wonder where this guy go, did he die? All right. I would make a lot more. The reason I don't is because, man, it all seems redundant, overdone, again and again and again. I mean, what am I gonna do? Make a tutorial about Rembrandt light? Okay, here I say, make it. And I tell you one story about Rembrandt light. You place light 45 degree angles at 45 degree angle and it shines down and makes this cute little triangle on your cheek and boom, Rembrandt light's done. Dude, why in the hell am I gonna make another tutorial about Rembrandt light? It is done. If you wanna know about Rembrandt light, you can search YouTube or any other video, pro, uh, video host right now and find 5,000 more tutorials on how to shoot Rembrandt light. Why will I make another one? But with that said, if you wanna know about Rembrandt light or any other lighting scenario, ask, drop a comment below, all right? And I will do my best to make a video for you, all right? If it's inside my skill set, I certainly will make a video for you. If it's not, well, then perhaps we can learn something together, okay? So, that's that. You know, that's the only reason you don't see more of me. I just haven't seen a lot about this right here. You know, light shining through the fog and making the light rays thing. I'm sure they're out there, but I, they're just not as repetitive as some of the other types of tutorials I've seen. But if you want to know something, do ask, and I will tell you, or I will try and, and learn it for you and we can learn it together but with that said we thank you for watching the video and taking the time to watch the video y'all be cool have a happy day and we'll chat with you later bye bye